Magic Camp is the new Disney Plus movie that just came out, and I have to say, it's incredibly generic. To be fair, I watched it with my wife and two kids, and we all made it through unscathed. No one left, no one checked their phone. We, we all just kind of had a mediocre time with it. There, there's the standard laughs, there's the standard character arcs. Everything is incredibly standard, in fact. If you're looking for possibly the safest movie to watch with a family, I present to you Magic Camp. We have every single character flair and arc you can expect to come out of Disney in 2020. The protagonist of the picture is a twofer. We have the camp counselor side of things and we have the magic school kid side of things. On, on the counselor side is Adam Devine as Andy. He's a a washed up magician that, that's uh, kind of down on his luck working as a cab driver in Vegas. Not even an Uber driver, his car wasn't nice enough, he said. Which I, which I find hard to believe based on some of the Uber cars I've been in, but we'll let that slide. Actor Nathaniel Logan McIntyre plays Theo. A really good kid who lost his dad. And I know what you're thinking, whoa, whoa, come on Adam, a, a kid loses a parent in a Disney movie? What year is this? every single year ever since Disney's been around? Because that is the playbook? It's as if every writer that's worked for Disney comes to the same conclusion early on. In order for the audience to attach themselves right away to a lead protag, we have to kill off a parent. It provides sympathy, it provides uh, a motivation for the character. It's just pure laziness. That's what Magic Camp is through and through, baby. We're just getting started. So right out of the gates, we have the sad kid with a supportive mom and the dead dad, and we have the the dried up magician who's going back to the camp where he used to be and, and, and he was really successful. After immediately meeting these characters and learning their backstories, I made some ballsy predictions. Prediction one, the kid was going to rise to the challenges presented at camp, um, make a name for himself and make his dead dad proud. Two, the washed up counselor was going to get his act together, pun intended, and prove that he is worth his salt. Now I know these are radical things to think from a Disney film, but let, let's be honest kids, we're, we're watching this because we want the sugar. We, we want the McDonald's Happy Meal, and if we, don't, if we don't feel satisfied at the end, then we'll just watch something a little more artsy. You're watching a movie called Magic Camp. Don't take this too serious. It certainly isn't. Gillian Jacobs is also here. I know what some of you community fans are thinking. Oh, Britta's in this? There's a lot of kids at this camp, and each one of them has one identifiable trait about them, a quirk that the audience can laugh and latch onto. We have the cute little bubbly girl who likes bunnies. She, she, she wants nothing more than to hold a bunny, but guess what? When she gets the opportunity, she's scared to do it. Will she ever be able to hold a bunny? I bet by the end she does. I bet by the end she does. There's a super rich girl whose wealthy parents are never around. They don't have time for her. They've got busy jobs and schedules. The closest relationship she has is to the limo driver. Gross. The help? Get out of here with that. By the end of the film, does she learn that her parents really don't need to be her parents and that the limo driver is just as much a part of her life as they ever were? Or do her parents show up at the last second to watch her perform? It's the second thing. It's, it's the more superficial thing. I'd like to think they never showed up to another event in her life again. Just to teach her a lesson. That you shouldn't count on people that constantly let you down because they'll just do it again. He said he was stopping out for cigarettes. If you want to break down of the plot, it's very simple. It's very by the numbers as, as to be expected. So uh, the kid's dad's dead, right, Theo? He's, he's kind of mopey about it, but he gets invited to a magic camp. And in this camp, there's a competition. You're broken into different Harry Potter houses and you have to compete to get the, I don't know what it is, the top hat, something like that. And, and there's also an achievement to get a golden wand. Andy has three golden wands himself. So that's, I guess that's something to be proud of. What Theo and Andy didn't know though, was that Jeffrey Tambor's character Preston, who runs the camp, yes, Jeffrey Tambor's in this too, has made it so that all Andy's kids are like newbie loser garbage children. They all have bizarre quirks like Bunny Girl and Asthma Boy, who's super good with numbers. He's a human calculator, but he's just the worst. He's got shirts brandished with the prescription medication he uses. He's allergic to everything. Th those types of kids are needy. I don't have time for them. And I definitely didn't like this kid until the end of the film 
where it turns out his quirks can actually be his best qualities. I didn't see it coming. We also have the kid whose parent went to the camp previously, has a very distinguished name in the community. He wears a bow tie. He's kind of a symbol of greatness, but his son just doesn't have the magic in him. He's kind of effeminate, has a certain sort of swagger to him. He's more interested in skipping rope than playing football, if you catch my drift. So of course, he's in charge of doing the clothing designs. And before one or two people decide to throw a name at me or slander me in some way, just know that I have absolutely zero issue with any sort of lifestyle. I just have issue with bad writing. For those wondering if any shenanigans take play in the camp, <laughs> you better believe it, Buster. All sorts of fun mishaps happen. Hope you're wearing a catcher's mitt because I'm about to throw a curveball at you. There is also a bully on the premises. Bet you weren't expecting that one. That's right, there's a kid that picks on the protagonist and his buddy. And wouldn't you know it, by the end of the film, the bully kind of learns his ways and says next year things will be a little bit different. Almost like they're frenemies at this point. Yeah, I, I didn't see it coming. I didn't see it happening that way. If you're looking for a paint by numbers Disney approach to filmmaking that's not the slightest bit insulting, has nothing new or potentially interesting to offer, Magic Camp's got your number. I've seen way worse stuff. I've seen far better stuff. It's just there. Sometimes you need a movie that's just there for an hour and a half and that's it. So those are my thoughts on Magic Camp. Thanks for watching the video. I try to put out new stuff on a weekly basis, so make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. I have a second channel full of more shenanigans, and I'm also on Twitch now. So there's a lot of variety, a lot of options, and hopefully you can find these channels via links on this video itself, if I did my job correctly. Otherwise, they might be in the description below, or you can just visit the channel page. All right, take care.